Hello, I'm Susanna Kerber, the Chief Curator and Research Officer here at the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites. And I'm here in our textile storage area to show you some more treasures from the Lincoln Financial Foundation collection. And these relate to Lincoln's legal career. And the first piece I'm going to show you actually just came back from conservation. And this is a really marvelous piece. This is Lincoln's legal wallet or portfolio. So this is where he would have kept legal papers as he was carrying carrying them around and, and going from case to case. And you can see actually the indentations here where he would have held it in his hands. So it's a very powerful, powerful object. We don't know exactly what years that he used it, but if I open this up, you will see Abraham Lincoln's signature and it says Springfield, Illinois. And then you can see that there are accordion folds that indicate that the, he had this both during his first law practice, which was with John Todd Stewart, a cousin of his eventual wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, and William Herndon, who was his final law partner before he ascended to the presidency. Now we had this conserved because as you can imagine, it was starting to crack in all those areas where the leather bends and is most worn. And we wanted to make sure that it would stay healthy for many, many years to come. You may know that Lincoln followed many professions as a young man. He was a store owner, he was a postmaster, he was a surveyor and he was a representative in the Illinois legislature. And he actually went to the legislature before he was a lawyer. So he was elected in 1834 and was really taken under the wing of John Todd Stewart, who then said, hey, actually maybe you should study law. So he began to study law in what was the usual fashion on the Illinois frontier, and that was to read books. He bought Blackstone's commentaries at an auction and was known for sitting under a tree barefoot, reading them day after day. And he read law in John Stewart's office so that he would be able to see how a practicing lawyer worked. Also, before he was actually admitted to the bar, he could practice in front of the Justice of the Peace. So he started doing cases very early before he was actually admitted to the bar in September of 1836. In his legal career, he would, he would be part of over 5,000 cases. The majority of those, especially early on, would have been settling debt or disputes or divorce. There were a few murder trials, various civil trials, essentially anything that came his way. He would travel the circuit twice a year, which meant that he would go thousands and thousands of miles over as the circuit changed size, 14, 15 counties in Illinois. And so it, it was a very demanding job. He would actually also be in three law firms, first with Stewart, then with Judge Stephen Logan, who he learned quite a bit as a distinguished jurist. He learned a lot from Logan. And then finally, he started his own law firm. And by 1844, had hired a junior partner, William Herndon. And William Herndon would actually go on to be one of the people who helped create our stories about Lincoln by going and interviewing people and writing his own tales often with his particular biases in them, but that's another story. This pen knife here, and you can see it has A. Lincoln in the cartouche, and we know from the engraving on the blade that it is from England and that it was made in 1855, and Lincoln actually is known to whittle during his cases. Again, not unusual. Judge Logan would actually whittle shingles when he was on the bench. Then here we have a desk set from the Lincoln and Herndon office. And this was actually found um, down by the floor joists by the architecture firm that occupied the space for 70 years after the law firm did. So you have his inkwell, you have his auto, his shaker, so he could write, dry the ink, blot, everything they needed to write their legal documents. The final object I'm going to show you is actually from much later. This is from Lincoln's presidency, but you can really see in the document that's associated with this how Lincoln used his legal training and was very aware of how specific he needed to be with his language, but also of the power of language. So this inkwell, and I'm going to turn it so you can see the ink inside, 
and this is actually the lid, was used to sign the Emancipation Proclamation in January of 1863 on New Year's Day. His youngest son, Tad, asked as a favor that it be given to his tutor. And on the bottom, you can see the history of the inkwell that the family wrote and, and pasted there. The Emancipation Proclamation is, of course, the document that Lincoln is best known for. It was very precise legally, but it also was very important philosophically because it made the Civil War specifically about slavery and it enabled African Americans to become an active and official part of fighting for freedom in this country. So probably the most resonant document beyond the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and this is where, where the ink that's at the bottom of the original once sat. 